Hey everybody, Christian from Treasure Town, and today we're going to be hunting through a $100 world coin grab bag. Now, I purchased this from Matt Tavery, who is down in Florida. His Instagram is at WorldCoinsSouthFL, and he is a coin dealer and former NGC grader that I met out at Witter Coin University. I ordered this from him because he said, hey, I've been thinking about doing some grab bags. Maybe we could put them on your site. So I wanted to do a little bit of a test run. Now I am aware, you know, if you're sending some grab bags to be unboxed on camera, they might be a little bit better than normal. But in any case, I'm just gonna sort of look through here and see if it's a good value. It's gonna target a hundred bucks in retail values of coins and get a good sense for what could be inside. So we'll be going coin by coin, learning the history, and I'll be taking a little bit more of a pause than usual so I can really understand these. They're supposed to be collectible. We'll see what he's cooked up for us. Let's get right into the grab bag. Okay, so to start off, we've got this little baggie of coins up here. Um, and I'm gonna not, you know, try to not reveal them all at once. We also have a two our valued customer. Um, so I think the first step for me is gonna be to open this up. And I know he had mentioned the way he's structuring these grab bags is he tries to put one sort of nice coin in. And so if I feel a nice coin in here, um, then I'm going to, you know, not show it off on camera, excuse me. Um, but the letter right here looks like mystery grab bag from World Coins South Florida, dear valued customer. Thank you for purchasing the World Coins South FL Mystery Grab Bag. Your purchase is a great way to begin or continue the journey in coin collection, and we appreciate your business. Um, at World Coins South FL, we believe in telling history through coins, which is reflected in the product we sell. Our inventory includes coins sunk on long lost Spanish treasure fleets in the Caribbean, coins made during sieges and battles to pay soldiers, those are always neat, and many other exciting types. Um, a little bit more information here, but each mystery grab bag does include a coin of crucial historical value and a short story explaining the unique history and significance. So I'm excited for that. Um, yeah, these uh, can be purchased at treasuretownyt.com-shop. Um, and so this will hopefully be a good representation of what that might look like. Um, and then, yeah, check out the uh, Instagram account, WorldCoinSouthFL, uh, the eBay page of the same name, or give him a call at this phone number so that he also offer appraisals at no charge and buy collections so that's from matthew tavery um, ceo of world coin south fl now it's time to dig into these coins and it looks like this one is going to be the better coin so i haven't looked inside i also didn't want to show off all the coins in the background at once so for now this is how we're doing it i only saw one coin uh, which was a south african it looked in really nice condition it looks like it's going to be this one. Um, so the interesting thing here is that there's probably going to be a fair amount of coins that I don't know too much about. I know that South Africa was on the Rand, um, the Paul Kruger and the Kruger Rand. Um, that's where it sort of gets his, the, uh, the name from. Paul Kruger was an important leader in their formation. And that was sort of the first super widely recognized gold coin in the one ounce form. Now they have different um, sort of compositions but this is going to be a 1965 South Africa 20 cents. Um, so language is going to be English. I'm not sure on the values. I'm going to have to look it up. And it's always tricky with world coins because, you know, sometimes, you know, this might be worth a good bit uh, in uncirculated. But if it's like a $3 coin, it's going to be tough to sell um, sort of on its own. But that's something you just have to take into consideration when purchasing um, and, and reselling um, South African coins. This one is going to be a 10 cents coin. Um, so this one says in Afrikaans, so Sud Africa, maybe. Um, oh, this is an interesting contrast. So on the left we have, uh, it's in English. This is in, I was going to, I was wondering why he had put English. Um, this one is in the native uh, to South Africa language Afrikaans and Swede Africa is the lettering instead. Um, and then you still have the 10 on the back there, but I wonder if these come from the same sets or similar sets, um, sort of an interesting juxtaposition. Um, our next one is going to be, whoa, another South African coin. This one is interestingly toned. Um, looks like it's got the English um, version and it looks silver on the first sort of Passover. Um, this one is a one rand um, Soli Deo Gloria. Um, and it's got sort of a an antelope on it. And this one is going to be also a 1965 South Africa Rand. Um, of course, it's, uh, you know, something that I don't really know the value of. So I think we could be looking at anywhere from, 
you know, if it's if I'm wrong and it's not silver, um, you know, maybe it's just worth a few dollars. But if it is silver, I bet in this condition, you're looking at at least like a $12, $15 coin, potentially more. Um, but you never know. This is a little bit out of sort of my expertise. Um, our next coin here is going to be a 1952, and I think it's Lao. I don't think you say Laos, but uh, Royaume du Laos, Lao. Uh, and then this looks like in their language. And we have an interesting book there. I'm not sure what it is. And it almost looks like, well, looks uh, like their native language. And then on this side, we see 50 centimes or cents. Um, and I think the interesting thing is, uh, you know, Lao would have been a French protector. I know there's French Indochina, which sort of encompassed a lot of that South Asian region, Southeast Asia. Um, and that dissolved, I think, in the 50s. But I'll update you with the information. And I'm not sure, you know, maybe this is a rare coin or maybe it's just like a nice uncirculated coin. Either way, cool, um, cool addition for this bag. Let's reach back, see what else we've got. Um, so it looks like this one is going to also be a South African um, coin. 1965, uh, South Africa, 50 cents Afrikaans. Um, this one is going to be, um, you know, not something I know too much about. Looks like that TS is the engraver's initials. And perhaps this is sort of just like a full set that's been broken down. And I'm not sure, you know, maybe it is worth a fair amount because it looks like over here, we also have another South African coin. This one's sort of a really nice red look to it. Um, two cents I can see from the back, um, and let's see, it looks like a charging, I don't know if that's a ram, horse, or a conglomeration of the two, but I really do like the deep red color to it, um, so that's that. Let's see what else we've got here. This one, um, so, so it basically looks like we got a full sort of broken down South African set. I mean, again, a deep red color. I'm not sure in terms of valuation, uh, you know, it's it's like normally I feel like I, I do have a sense, but in this case, I'm not quite as sure one one cent, I would think. Um, so that's, you know, again, a deep red color. Um, and then let's see what else we've got. OK, so this one um, is going to be a 1945 P war nickel with an obverse lamination error. You can see, I guess, a little bit of lamination sort of running all through the coin um, and uh, less so on the back, but still a little bit of graininess. So um, that looks like it is it um, for the non-special coins. So at this point, I'm sort of assuming that there is some considerable value in the coins in front of us, um, just because, you know, the the this coin, and, and maybe it is the case that it's going to be worth a ton. But um, yeah, this coin is going to be the rare or more historic one. So time to flip this oper open, excuse me, and it says 1787 Mysore Gold Phantom. So I've actually seen one of these in the past. Tipu Sultan, who lived from 1750 to 1799, ruled the southern Indian state of Mysore for the last 20 years of the 18th century. His stubborn defiance of Britain's East India Company, which I've showed you some coins in the past, the 10 and 20 caches are somewhat uh, abundant in my <laughs> circle of the collecting world and his insistence on governing his ancestral lands his way, he proved to be Britain's most formidable Indian foe. It took four wars before he surrendered to the British. He had a fair amount of uh, important victories against the British. And let's see, he was known as the Tiger of Mysore and adopted his animal as the symbol of his rule. He came face to face with a tiger and his gun did not work while hunting. Taking advantage of this, the tiger attacked Tipu until he reached his dagger and stabbed the tiger to death. Wow. So that earned him the nickname Tiger of Mysore. Um, the gold phantom is the smallest gold circulating coin in world history and was used to make small change by merchants. So here we go. Um, we've got the gold phantom and I did not realize that history. So that's super fun um, and really interesting. You can see the tiny little um, you, you know, it's like less than, I, I wonder how many parts of a gram. I, I would think this is probably like 0.5 of a gram or so of gold. Um, but it's, it's really tiny. The gold value might be 20 bucks or so today. Um, but the historical value is a bit more. And again, I'm not sure the only one, I know that this one is worth about a dollar and 50 cents. The rest, I'm still waiting on the valuation. Um, and then the India Mysore gold phantom, you know, that one is going to be the test. I'll go check it out. Um, to be totally honest, I think in terms of this grab bag, um, you know, they're going to be for sale on treasuretownyt.com shop. 
Um, this one, you know, it, it sort of depends what the value of the, these coins are. Um, and I'll also be unboxing a few other ones. So, um, you know, of, of his, uh, his grab bags. And yeah, we'll see what happens going forward. I'm interested in researching the Lao value. This one is going to be also important. And then I think that this one seems to be really nice in terms of, you know, it seems well-preserved, good condition, but I'm also not up to date on what these are trading for. Thanks so much for watching and let me know what you think if this is a fair grab bag or not. I'm always interested in hearing your opinions. Thanks for watching the video. I'd encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to stay updated. I've also got Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, so you can follow me there. Um, TreasureTownYT.com is the main channel website. Definitely give that a visit. I've got a lot of information about me up there and the channel. Uh, CoinGrabBag.com as well currently redirects there, but it's some good opportunities for very fair grab bags, both made by me and other sellers. A lot of different options, so that's a good way to support. Um, there's also TreasureTownCoins.com. In the future, my coin dealing uh, operation will be done out of that website. Uh, CoinMeltPrice.com for updates on the melt prices of your coins, both U.S. and world. World, a lot of resources in that website and then coinsmetalscards.com being developed right now as a marketplace and news source for coins metals cards and collectibles in general so i'll see you on my future videos looking forward to seeing you there and hope you have a good day